damage. We're taking a look live right now at the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv. Top U.S. military officials told lawmakers tonight in an unclassified briefing that Russian troops are now just 20 miles from the city, noting this is just the first phase of the military strike with the vast majority of Russian forces still behind the line. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this very important newscast. I'm Chris Radcliffe. And I'm Leslie Draffin. Today, President Biden told Americans that we will feel the impact of this crisis here. I will do everything in my power to limit the pain the American people are feeling at the gas pump. But this aggression cannot go unanswered. The United States will defend every inch of NATO territory with the full force of American power. President Biden promised to protect Americans from possible Russian cyber attacks and from the even higher spike in gas and food prices this crisis could bring. So let's talk about a few of the things you need to know right now about how the conflict in Ukraine could impact all of us. First, gas prices. They are expected to rise and continue rising. Russia is a major exporter of crude oil, and experts warn that the conflict could cause gas prices to really spike. Now, we buy a lot of barrels from Russia every day. Russia is also an exporter of other products, which includes metals and agricultural products. So the conflict would also make current supply chain issues worse in those departments. And the second thing you need to know, cybersecurity attacks could be another effect of the conflict. We may see more companies being targeted for ransomware attacks, and experts warn an increase of emails and websites could be infected with that ransomware. A little bit later in the show, 6 News reporter Bailey Bates shows us how Central Texas schools are training the next generation of cybersecurity experts. And then third, what many of us may be wondering, how the U.S. got involved in all this. The U.S. has issued economic sanctions on Russia. And yesterday, President Biden said the U.S. will not be sending troops to fight in Ukraine, but will defend NATO territories. Thousands of troops have been deployed to Eastern Europe already. Meanwhile, back home here in Central Texas, troops on Fort Hood are still in a very heightened level of readiness, as it's being called, and they've been so for nearly a month now since tensions started getting worse. Right, while no deployment orders have been issued, a spokesman for Third Armored Corps said that units routinely practice readiness trainings as a precautionary measure, quote, to provide our national command authority with a variety of options should additional forces be needed in Europe to assure our NATO and European allies and deter Russian aggression, end quote. And here, take a look. Fort Hood provided these videos and photos to give you a look at how units have been training the past few weeks. Here you can see first aircraft conducting medevac training, and this all took place in Germany. These images show different training exercises at Fort Hood, like practicing driving in nighttime conditions or responding to chemical attacks all to ensure troops are prepared for anything. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden announced a new round of sanctions targeting Russia after its invasion of Ukraine. He made that announcement today. The sanctions block the assets of four large Russian banks, impose export controls, and sanction oligarchs. For now, the president has held off imposing some of the most severe sanctions. And we are wrapping up our coverage right now of Russia's attack on the Ukraine for the moment. Later in the news, our Verify team helps us sort out viral images that are going around of the invasion to ensure that what you're seeing online is indeed the real deal.